Hello, greetings. This is another free episode of The Walking Clinic by Kai Eckhart. And today's topic is apps, technology, software. We all know that technology can bring wonderful things, especially for musicians. I'm thinking of programs such as transcribing software that allows you to slow something down without changing the pitch. Notation software, which allows you to play something into the keyboard and it translates that automatically into notation. We're looking at hundreds and hundreds of different apps that you can use as practice tools. They make your practice sound incredible because you have a whole orchestra backing you up while you're doing your exercises. And a whole host of other things of which many of them are currently being developed and some of them I'm just simply not aware of. So the question here that I'd like to shed some light on is, is this good or is it bad? Or is it somewhere in the middle? And I'd like to offer you a perspective. In order to find out whether something is good or bad, we have to look at the effects it has on us on the long run. And uh, being in music for 35 years, and seeing the development um, of young kids coming up and joining the field out there, uh, the way the clubs and the studios are behaving over the last few decades. Um, I would lie to you if I were to say that technology has been a blessing, to say the least. Um, but to be fair and balanced, um, we're looking at what the good things are uh, which I have just been stated and now let's look at the other effects that technology has on us so if you get to the next level and you look at a software that allows you to um, create a chart just by virtue of you playing a note into the keyboard and then that being printed out for you um, transposed at your fingertips for horns other instruments. What it does, it basically compensates for your lack of ability to do that. So if you look at the other softwares, the ones that help you practice, um, while you surround yourself with an orchestra that plays the changes while you pick your part and try to do your work, you are also using that extra material so that you don't get bored while you practice because if you didn't have it if it was just you and your instrument you would most likely get bored and not feel motivated to practice so there's another example of how the technology compensated for your lack of the ability to focus your attention on music and your instrument Third, we also have to look at what happens to our mind over time as we become used to these things. Um, in particular, I'm thinking about autotune. How many artists in the studio today are less than mediocre when they appear live because they have been leaning on the available technology. Um, most likely there are a lot. So this brings me to the point that while you are working with your apps and with your technology in the here and now, you are in fact not training certain faculties that you would if you didn't have them. Okay? So to back up that point even further, let's go back to the 1600s and look, look back at the very early artists of classical music or in the African tradition the drum orchestras. They had to get together um, with a whole bunch of people and crank out hours and hours and hours of work. They had to learn painstakingly 
how to translate each note into a written character and to manifest that character on a piece of paper with a feather and ink. And that's how they wrote for 80-piece orchestras. Hundreds and hundreds of pages of music handwritten, beautifully handwritten, I shall say. And on the African side, hundreds and hundreds of hours spent with the community working out drums and patterns and learning those from the elders. So in that context, let's look at what's good about the old way. The good thing is, number one, on the African side, there was a very high value for the elder's life. So when a person was in their 60s or 70s, or even older in some cases, they were the ones that had the knowledge, the memory, and the understanding of how the tradition worked. And that person could pass on the accumulated information to the new generation in real time. Um, the young ones had more physical power to deliver, but the old ones had the knowledge and the mental power to move the whole generation forward. Um, if you look at the way modern society works, you find that we have a, a range of young people who may be in their late teens to early 30s who are um, generally placed on a pedestal as being the beautiful, the successful, and the powerful ones. And if you are younger than that or you're older than that, then God bless you. There's really not much room for you or much reason for you to be around, to stick around. So if you look at that in itself, and then you combine that with technology, that comes in and allows you to create an impression of being somewhere where you are actually not. Um, part of that is the whole DJ world, you know, and uh, all respect to you, you DJs out there who are cranking out the tunes and pumping up the jam. Um, you are, in fact, electronic artists. I wouldn't call you musicians because for you to be a musician, you would have to have a minimum skill to interact with someone else in real time. I think that's where personally I draw the line. If somebody plays a pattern at you and you can't respond in any way and you don't know what that is, you can't hear it, you're not a musician. You can be a very proficient, uh, artistic, um, how would you call it, um, an engineer of some sort. But unfortunately, a lot of times, engineers call themselves musicians and because they get paid they find themselves on a higher platform of recognition and um, the older traditions the things that have been around for hundreds of years disappear into the shadows in some degree never to appear again so I'm getting somewhere now we're looking at hidden dangers and I'll give you some more examples um, the final judgment is yours. I just wanted to be a voice for the elements that are less spoken about, the elements that need to be brought into the light so that you can make an informed choice of whether you're going to go out there and buy more gear or you're going to find yourself a good mentor or you're going to get together with your friends and start cranking out some real music. Um, the next thing is Real music gives you the impression that you sound good when you actually suck. I would much rather have a group of people suck for a couple of years and then come out hitting, playing the real stuff, than surrounding my ears with beautiful music that is created by machines that have no soul, that have no needs, no emotional existence that are only here to create the impression of beauty and success. So in a society where people feel the need to physically and surgically alter their appearance in order to gain sense of self-esteem, you know for sure that there's a very powerful force out there that wants you to believe 
that you are only beautiful and valuable if you are either on top of the pyramid, worshipped by everybody with millions of hits, or you have a bank account with fat ass numbers rolling off, or if you are behind the scenes pulling the strings making even more money. What about the rest of us? What about people who come here, who love music, who pick up an instrument, who dig the instrument? It's just like Vogue magazine makes women feel ugly. Um, YouTube and um, American Idol and these competition reality shows make the regular person feel like they can't play. So we are constantly dealing with an atmosphere where we feel underappreciated, undervalued, we suck, we are worth nothing. And with that state of mind, we are perfect, perfect consumers to buy into the system that is currently prevailing. So think about that. So if we round all of this up right now, I would like to bring your attention back to why the heck are we going through all of this? Why the heck do we even care to sit down and practice and to sound terrible day after day just to get a little advance? If next door with a click on the laptop we can have the symphonies of the world descending at us for just 99 cents, why do we even bother? And I'll give you the answer. Because the actual value hidden behind the surface is the development of your soul. That's right. It is the development of the relationship between your mind and your body. And when that relationship gets into a balance and you are able to create vibrations, consistent rhythm, pitch, harmony, you are in fact communicating directly to your soul you are feeding it with energy and the soul showers you with blessings and motivations to keep going on and to face the hard facts of life to deal with the ups and the downs and to have the mindset necessary to solve the problems so it's all about your self-esteem so you cannot allow your self-esteem to be dependent on technology that you buy into for the sake of creating the impression that you are further down the line than you really are. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to end my little presentation by saying please go ahead and suck, but keep practicing, keep at it, and even more so, when you suck you don't really suck. You are just a little wobbly. Think about a baby. When a baby first makes its steps like you all did, like I did, we were wobbling all over the place with the hands up in the air. Then we would fall down a thousand times before we could steadily walk or run or jump or do acrobatics. But we cannot skip that phase, y'all. So please, I've been seeing much too much skipping the essentials to try to be there quickly to create the impressions to get the hits the attention ladies and gentlemen it's a trap it's a trap and we're seeing the negative results recently I was at Berkeley College of Music doing a clinic and I was at an open house in San Francisco yesterday at a great school called Blue Bear Music I spoke to the faculty and we're all seeing the same thing there is a kind of brainwashing that is taking effect on young people where they do not understand the need of going the slow, patient, and ultimately beautiful path. You are beautiful as you are. So with those words, I hope you give this some thought. And if you are ready for a mentor, at least for a few months, you should check it out. Visit me at kaiekar.com. I'll be happy to help you out. So, cheers. Take it easy. Have a good day. Seven connections to seven directions. Seven connections, and we don't stop.